Hey there, welcome to Brainy and welcome to a brand new episode of Tech News, the series on this channel in which I give a breakdown of some of the top tech news of the day or the week, keeping you informed whenever something new pops up. So let's get into the news. First up, we have a very interesting story coming from GadgetsNow.com and it seems that Twitter has actually been forcing people to follow Donald Trump. Hundreds of thousands of people were forced to follow US President Donald Trump on Twitter after a technical glitch prompting the social network site to apologize to users. The new president was handed control of the POTUS account when he took the oath of office at Friday's inauguration. Some users parted ways with at POTUS on the social network once it changed hands from former President Barack Obama to Trump. However, the reasons unexplained, they automatically refollowed the president account without their permission. Users who noticed the glitch were quick to bring it to the attention of Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, who acknowledged mistakes in the process that caused users to unfollow the POTUS account to follow it without opting to do so. He explained in a series of tweets that users who followed President Obama's new handle at POTUS44 afternoon on Friday were automatically set to follow the Trump run at POTUS handle. In addition, some people who unfollowed at POTUS in the past were mistakenly marked to now follow at POTUS, Dorsey said on Twitter. This also affected other official administration accounts like at VP, at White House, and at PressSec. We believe this affected about 560,000 people. This was a mistake, it wasn't right, we own it and we apologize, no excuses, he tweeted. Dorsey said the issue has been corrected, so this story is actually pretty interesting and I do find it kind of strange that this problem happened to people who unfollowed the account of the US president. Coincidence or not, it's still pretty weird that this accident happened directly in relation to the Akota's handle. What passes through my mind is the possibility of the problem actually happening to other users who unfollowed other accounts on Twitter and may not have known this glitch happened to them, or even the chance of Twitter glitching out in the future and this same problem occurring once again. Either way, I hope Twitter holds everything together to prevent prevent this from happening again. Moving on, Samsung teases a new tablet for the Mobile World Congress reveal. Now the interesting thing about this story is the fact that I said in a previous video that Samsung would not be appearing at the Mobile World Congress with the Samsung Galaxy S8, but it seems they have another device in mind. Samsung just sent out invitations for its MWC press event complete with a shadowy image of what seems to be a new slit. The invite doesn't give away any details, but a supposed Galaxy Tab S3 did pass through the FFC earlier today and Korean outlet ET News claims the device will have a 9.6 inch 2048 by 1536 display, a Snapdragon 820 processor and 4GB of RAM. The 2015 Galaxy Tab S2 was a solid tablet with an exceptionally slim design. It wasn't particularly cutting edge even upon release though, so Samsung's mainstream tablet line is due to a refresh. The event is on February 26 at 1 p.m. ET, so that's quite interesting. Our next story comes from TheVerge.com. Mozilla is shutting down the group behind Firefox OS. Mozilla is shutting down its connected devices group, which was responsible for the failed smartphone operating system Firefox OS, and more recently attempts to build the OS into devices like routers, streaming boxes, and even basic computers. CNET first reported the news saying that about 50 people are being laid off from the company. Ari Jaxi, who has been in charge of Mozilla's connected devices unit for over two years, is also said to be leaving. Mozilla confirmed that it was cutting positions in a statement to The Verge. The company said it would shift its focus to researching new technologies for connected devices and step back from focus on launching and scaling commercial projects. To some extent, the dissolution of Mozilla's connected devices group feels like it's been a long time coming. Mozilla has had no luck when it comes to mobile and it hasn't been clear what benefits Firefox could bring to routers and other connected devices that existing platforms couldn't offer. With Mozilla being controlled by a non-profit, its ability to offer a strong alternate platform could have had a meaningful impact on how major players in the connected devices space decide and deal with privacy. But Mozilla's initiative to get Firefox inside of connected devices never really got off the ground. It gave up on putting Firefox OS into force back in late 2015 and began shifting over to exploring the IoT market last year, making some layoffs in the process. Whatever came out of that effort never made it to the public. 
For its part, Mozilla still believes it could find a role in the growing ecosystem of connected devices. IoT is clearly an emerging technology space, the company says, but it's still early. And finally, the last story also comes from The Verge. Com. Google's self-driving car just got way better at driving themselves. California's Department of Motor Vehicles released its annual autonomous vehicle disengagement report today in which all the companies that are actively testing self-driving cars on public roads in the Golden State disclose the number of times the human drivers were forced to take control of their driverless vehicles. The biggest news to come out of this report is from Waymo, Google's new self-driving car company, which reported a huge drop in disengagements in 2016 despite an almost equally huge increase in the number of miles driven. In other words, Waymo's self-driving cars are failing at a much lower rate, even as they are driving a whole lot more miles. The company says that since 2015, its rate of safety-related disengages has fallen from 0 0.8 per thousand miles to 0 0.2 per thousand miles in 2016. So while Waymo increased its driving by 50% in the state, racking up a total of 635,868,000 miles, the company's total number of reported disengages fell from 341 in 2015 to 124. This fourfold improvement reflects the significant work we've been doing to make our software and hardware more capable and mature. Dimitri Dolgov, head of self-driving technology for Waymo, wrote in a blog post. And because we're creating a self-driving car that can take you from door to door almost, all our time has been spent on complex urban or suburban streets. This has given us valuable experience sharing the road safely with pedestrians and cyclists and practicing advanced maneuvers such as making unprotected left turns and traversing multi-lane intersections. The majority of Waymo's disengagements were a result of software glitches, the company says. Unwanted maneuvers, perception discrepancies, and recklessly behaving road users also accounted for dozens of disengagements. There were no reports of crashes or accidents. California requires companies that want to test autonomous vehicles on the roads to register for an autonomous driving permit. As part of this program, companies are also required to report their disengagement rates to the DMV, which then makes those numbers public. The requirement was likely a factor in Uber's refusal to obtain an autonomous permit, resulting in the DMV revoking the ride company's vehicle registration for its self-driving cars. Waymo is miles ahead of its competitors in public testing, but the worst of car and tech companies have been testing for many years privately. Waymo still has an edge on real-world experience. Also, the news of the improvements in Waymo self-driving technology comes just as the company plans to deploy its fleet of autonomous Crystal Pacifica minivans, which it first debuted at the Detroit show last month. The vans will hit the road in Mountain View, California at Phoenix sometime in the next few days. And that's just about it for this video. If you like this video, learned anything new, or want more, feel free to subscribe, comment below, and give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this series and would like more videos like this, more tech updates whenever some new tech news come out, or whenever some new tech news that I'm very interested in comes out, and you want updates or whenever something new comes out, that's why I just said again, okay. So if you want any stuff like that, if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to let me know by leaving a comment below, shouting me out on Twitter, give me a tweet, hit me up on Twitter, just give me your information, give me your thoughts on this, comment down below, and subscribe to this channel for new videos every single week. If you want to check out previous videos, you can also do so by using the links I have provided in the description below. If you want to check out previous tech news videos, the links will also be in the description below. And if you want updates whenever a new video is uploaded to the channel, feel free to check out my Twitter and follow the Twitter where you can get updates as soon as a new video is uploaded. Like seriously, every time a new video is uploaded, literally in the first minute or so, you get an update on that video being uploaded. Also, feel free to check out my Buds channel, Tech Ethic, and another channel of a friend of mine, Dragon Master MXG, if he's actually watching it. So, shout out to guys. I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you all of you are having a great week. I haven't been having that a great, I haven't been having like the greatest week, but it's really been fun. And that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for helping me out. Thank you for supporting my channel. And I will be seeing you in the next video.